So my name is Glenn Hancock, and this is a Lockheed 12A. Um, I've got, actually bought it from a friend of mine. Uh, I've been flying a Beach 18 for a while, and he started thinking about selling the, the Lockheed. Um, I did threaten at the time to uh, paint it if I bought it because it was, it's a polished airplane and it, it's a lot of work to keep it polished. Um, but we, uh, my wife and son have, have been flying this thing around and obviously not as much as we want to here lately because of the, the pandemic. Um, and so this is probably the first trip that we've gone on that was more than two hours long. But we're up in Kansas at the moment and having a great time and uh, giving rides in the in the Lockheed. It's, it's a really awesome airplane. It, it flies similar to a, a Beach 18, but it's a it's a lot a lot better engineered airplane. It's a lot tighter. Um, all the controls are, are just a lot smoother moving and, and you know flying the airplane. It's got a, a lot slower stall speed, so if you want to come in in a pretty tight runway, you can do it. So it's you know it's just a, a pretty pretty comfortable airplane to fly. The uh, the the probably the the only aspect of the airplane that's a little uncomfortable is the cockpit because back in the day this is a, a 1936, so it, it, back in the day everybody was a little smaller than we are now. So it's uh, the chairs. The, uh, the emergency gear handle is actually attached to the chair, so the chair won't move back and forth. You know, you're, you're kind of stuck where you're where you're sitting. But other than that, it's a it's a really awesome airplane. Everybody in the back loves it. It's a pretty comfortable airplane to sit in. So it's uh, we've we've had a really good time flying it. So so this airplane was was purchased originally in 1936 off the assembly line by uh, A.T. Talbot. Uh, I think that's his name. Um, he, uh, he, I think he was the third secretary of the Air Force, uh, something like that. And uh, he, he was friends with with Lindbergh and some other pretty famous pilots back then. And the, the story is that they that they probably flew this airplane as well because they were, you know, they went on trips and stuff together. But I don't have any, you know, definitive evidence that that's true. Uh, after he. Uh, own the airplane he sold it to an oil company um, we've actually got a, a photo an original photo of Bowman Field with this airplane sitting in front of the FBO in 1938 at the for the Kentucky Derby with a bunch of DC-2s and lock load stars and stuff in the background it's a pretty pretty cool photo um, but after that it just started getting bought up by bought by oil companies and they used it for their executives to, to carry around it got commissioned into the military during World War II. Um, I don't have a whole lot of information as to what exactly they used it for, they, other than they carried generals around in it. Um, but I don't know you know, where or to what extent. And then after the war, it got sold back to some oil companies and eventually ended up in 1986. A friend of mine, Joe Shepard, bought it and they, they spent about 15 years restoring it. Um, and after they got through restoring it, they were contacted by a movie uh, house that wanted to use it for the latest Amelia Earhart movie that Hilary Swank was in. So um, they used this airplane. It was the primary airplane they used for that whole movie. And um, so that's, that's about it. So one of the things that, that's pretty incredible to me is, one, this thing was built in 1936 and Lockheed had created a Lockheed, a Lockheed 10. So they originally conceived of this airplane as a feeder airline. They had a government contract that they were competing with. They were competing with Beach and one other company. I can't remember who else it was. Um, but they actually won the contract for the feeder airline. Um, and then Lockheed got decided that they were going to go into building military airplanes instead of civilian. And that's for the war. And so they, they kind of quit building these. They only built about 150 of these. But the, the really interesting part about it is, is that when they decided that they were going to compete with the contract, they went from having no formers, no wings, no engine mounts, no gear, no, none of the stuff that, that is on the airplane to having a finished airplane that they were actually ready to start selling in about 28 days. And I've got some internal uh memo things that they were sending out they had like a little storybook that they were sending out to all their employees 
and letting everybody know where they were in that project. So they were going through and saying, you know, today Bob finished the formers for the fuselage and then tomorrow, you know, Jimmy put the skins on and we got the rivets done and we got, so it, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, it's just a jokey kind of thing that they, that they were doing when they were going through building it. But just the fact that it was built in such a short period of time just is mind boggling.